This is video number four in our series uh, Topics in Tensor Analysis. And now the previous video we had left off with this equation. And this shows now how a contravariant tensor transforms let's get it in better focus from an x-coordinate system to a y-coordinate system. Again, for um, our videos, we were considering just a generalized x-curvilinear coordinate system and a generalized y-curvilinear coordinate system. So here was a vector in the x-coordinate system with these components rs. And here are the corresponding components in the y coordinate system. And the way you can see there's a pattern here. We're in the y coordinate system. We have the upper labels here for the components m and n. So for the partial derivatives of y, it has to be in the numerator where we have the upper labeling of m and n. Now here, we're in the x frame. The partial derivatives for x are going to have r and s, but they have to be in the denominator because this tensor here has the repeated indexes. Upper, lower, upper, lower. As we noted in our previous discussions, uh, that's like the general pattern for contravariant transformation. And again, this came from just considering two contravariant vectors that we were multiplying together. A has d number of components and so does vector B and we're multiplying any one component from A by all the d components of vector B then taking another component from A, multiplying it by all the d components that vector B has, and keep going to. We've done that for every single component. So we're going to have a d squared number of components, and we just symbolize that by mn, meaning that we're multiplying all the components together. And we don't have to say it a, b. We can just symbolize that with a t here. Uh, because it's the components that we're interested in and how they transform from one coordinate system to another. So here then is the general pattern um, for a tensor of rank 2. It has two sets of components and these transform then as contravariant components. We have the derivatives of y with respect to x and again this is analogous to the way um, a displacement vector transforms from an x-coordinate system to a y-coordinate system. We note that here then for contravariant components in each case they're labeled as superscripts. But now for the general pattern is that here this is in the y-frame. A partial y with respect to x. This has to be these here have to appear with the y's and they have to appear upstairs. So again, that tells us the y's, the partial y's, have to be in the numerator. Here we're in the x frame. Here its components are upstairs, but these now are going to be the repeated indexes, so they have to appear downstairs with their partial with respect to x. So that is like the general pattern then of um, how contravariant tensors transform from, say, an x coordinate frame to a y coordinate frame. And for covariant vectors, it's very similar actually. Here was our general transformation equation for a covariant vector. Now notice here we're in the y coordinate frame. Its components are listed as subscripts. 
so that when we have the partial derivative with respect to y, that has to appear now in the denominator. This is lower, and now it's a subscript here, but it's appearing lower case we can think of because it's down here in the denominator. And then for our corresponding vector in the x frame, here then the component again is this as a subscript, but we know then that this is the one that has the repeated index, so it has to appear upstairs over here, so then our partial of x has the m upstairs. And that's our general pattern um, of how covariant vectors transform from the x coordinate frame to the y coordinate frame. So let's just say that we have a vector covariant vector in the x-coordinate frame, and here then is how it transforms into the y-coordinate frame, and here's another covariant vector in the x-coordinate frame, and it transforms into the y-coordinate frame. Now, when we multiply these two vectors together, again, this has a d number of components, and this has a d number of components, and we're multiplying all the components together. Any one component here can be multiplied by all the d components of this vector. Then take another component, multiply it by all the d components of that vector. So we have a d squared number of components, but we can symbolize that just very simply as m times n. And again, we don't have to say c D, we're not interested in what vectors we're multiplying together. We're interested in keeping track of their components. So we can just symbolize that with a T in the Y frame. Then here we have our partial derivatives. That's from multiplying these together. And then we're multiplying these together. And again, we're multiplying these components by these components. We symbolize it like this. So here then is a general pattern of how covariant tensors transform from the X frame to the Y frame. Now notice here we're in the Y frame, but the components are downstairs, so the partial derivatives of Y have to appear in the denominator. They had to be downstairs. The superscripts, but they had to be downstairs here in the denominator. Here, these components are downstairs. They're subscripts because it's a covariant tensor, but they, these are, this tensor has to have the repeated indexes. So these have to appear upstairs. So our partial with respect to x, in this case, is going to be in the numerator. So this is like the general pattern then of how a covariant tensor would transform from an x-coordinate frame to a y-coordinate frame. Now what would happen if, say, we had a tensor like this? Here we're in the x-coordinate frame, and it has R, S, so here we have covariant components and contravariant components. So our tensor in the Y frame likewise has covariant components and contravariant components. Now let's think of the pattern. Let's start here. Then here, the partial derivative with, with respect to Y for this has to be in the numerator. This appears upstairs. So here we're going to have a partial with respect to y, and the n is upstairs. But for this one, it's going to be downstairs. Again, this is a superscript, but it has to appear that here it's, it's a subscript, so it has to appear in a denominator here. Now for this one, this has the repeated index. These have to be repeated indexes. So if this appears downstairs, with our partial with respect to x, that's got to be upstairs. And here, with our partial derivative with respect to x, this s has to appear downstairs. So we have our repeated indexes, up, down, up, 
down. And then here, this is downstairs. It's downstairs. This component is upstairs. Here, it is upstairs. So this would be like the general pattern of how a mixed tensor would transform from an x-coordinate frame to a y-coordinate frame. And that really is all we have to say for this video. Um, once you recognize the patterns, it becomes kind of second nature just to kind of manipulate the symbols here accordingly. Uh, what we're going to do in the next video, though, is try to take a look in more detail uh, at the properties of covariant and contravariant components. And then once we get that better established, uh, that might take one or two more videos to do that. Uh, then we'll examine what a metric tensor is. So come back and join us for those videos. Um, we'll continue our discussions. And reminder that the playlist for all the videos is at the website at digital-university.org.